Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition recently made a much-anticipated comeback, enabling many players to replay this classic but often overlooked title while also introducing it to a wider audience. If you're familiar with our 5 Fixes series, where we recommend 5 fixes for Final Fantasy games, we haven't been doing top fixes. First of all, because they have often been talked to death in regard to better known games, and second of all, because more niche or less talked about fixes often allow us to understand these classic games in new and interesting ways. Seeing as Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles only got back on people's radar with the release of the remastered edition, and because the game has some pretty glaring faults that need to be discussed, we will, however, make an exception. I'm Peter from Birds of Play, introducing top 5 things to fix Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Number 5 Unintuitive UI. A wise man once said, A UI is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's no good. Who said that? I said that. I said that. At its core, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is a fairly simple game that holds its core gameplay loop very close to its heart, letting you travel across a map in a caravan and taking on monster-infested dungeons in search of myrrh, magical tree drops needed to power a crystal back in your hometown because if you don't, everyone dies. The dungeons follow the tried and true formula of having you make your way through before finally encountering the boss. Combat is similarly fairly simple, mostly relying on the player being mindful of enemy attacks, moving around them, and returning the favor either by hitting back or casting magic. The battles are, however, made more interesting by the need to coordinate with other players, carrying the magical chalice around, as well as the option to combine spells to create more powerful magic. It's a simplistic but rewarding system. It is therefore such a shame that the game is burdened by an unnecessarily complicated user interface and unintuitive navigation. The mobile versions, for example, make use of their touchpad functionality to allow players to simply select what they want by clicking and dragging it. On PlayStation and the Switch, players are, however, often forced to perform some mental gymnastics in order to select what they want to select. The UI is simultaneously cluttered while also feeling sparse. Nothing feels like it's where it's supposed to be, and navigating the menus is an amazingly bad experience for such a simple game. A small example of this would be the artifact selection screen, wherein artifacts are lined up in a circle. The game, however, only accepts left and right as an input to navigate the circle, creating a disconnect between how the layout is perceived and navigated. This disregard for natural navigation makes its way into almost all aspects of the user interface on consoles. It is, of course, reflective of the game's age to some degree, but seeing as this was somewhat updated for the mobile versions, I don't see the harm in updating for the consoles as well. A good UI stays out of your way and doesn't waste your precious time. This UI is Hope from Final Fantasy XIII. Stop whinging and bringing me down, Hope! So watch your mother died. Lightning is your new mom now and she's got a sword and a metal horse! Number 4 User Experience Traditionally, when using the term User Experience, or UX, it's used in the context of UI. But I feel I've scraped the barrel enough when it comes to the interface. This time, I mean it in the literal sense. The literal user experience of the game. To get this out of the way first, the loading times in Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles are ridiculous. For a game that runs on smartphones as well as more sophisticated hardware, or at least more game-centric hardware like the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch, the loading times are absolutely abysmal. They're horrible. The situation isn't helped by the fact that the game has to load quite frequently. And now, I've had to watch it for such a long time that I feel like the loading screen should have been featured prominently in the trailer for the game. Also, why do shops show you stuff you can never buy from them? Like showing you a sword, when only armor is for sale, or vice versa? Oh my god. Regarding the user experience as a whole, the game's biggest sin might be that it doesn't do a great job of explaining itself to the player. I know, I skipped the tutorial, but a game like this shouldn't really need to have a dedicated tutorial. For example, when I first encountered a Miasma stream, Stiltskin, the Mughal that I felt was much cooler in Final Fantasy IX to be honest, didn't do a great job of explaining to me why I couldn't get past the stream. This led to some unnecessary backtracking, and it wasn't until I stumbled upon the solution later myself that I realized that I had to have a specific element to pass. This would have been a great time for Stiltskin to step up and tell me what I was doing wrong. At least the first time around. 
And it's indicative of a larger problem with the game. The game should explain things that are important to know once they become important to perform or prepare for, not just throw it all into a massive information dump at the beginning of the game. If you're going to make me take a dump, at least prepare my rump. Number 3 World Sharing All else aside, the return of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was mostly anticipated due to its multiplayer component. Originally requiring a GameCube system, four separate Game Boy Advances, and link cables to hook the whole thing up. The re-release therefore presented an opportunity to make the multiplayer more accessible, finally enabling the game to live up to its full potential on a large scale. Not only letting the select few enjoy it in all its glory, but rather everyone. The light version of the game being the backbone of this brand new world. Letting a group of friends play together without everyone having to buy their own copy of the game. The future looked bright for the resurrection of the Crystal Chronicles sub-franchise of Final Fantasy games. That is, until players got their hands on the game and started to notice that whether you have the light version or the full version of the game, the multiplayer is riddled with hurdles on the way to making this a genuinely engaging multiplayer experience. Firstly, setting up the multiplayer is a real pain, especially since you have to do it for every dungeon. Each time you enter, even if you're playing with a dedicated group of friends, and even if you manage to enter a dungeon, it isn't that unlikely that the connection will be lost midway through. This is seemingly affected by where you are playing the game. Some regions having little to complain about, while others, such as Australia, had the game pulled from Nintendo Switch eShop due to the connection issues being too severe. But the first thing I would like to point out about the multiplayer, aside from any connectivity issues and the need to set up a party for each dungeon, is that the whole experience is fundamentally designed to be a single player experience. In the original GameCube version, as difficult as it might have been to get all the equipment ready, players established a caravan together, creating up to 8 players with different professional backgrounds. In the remastered version, however, players are expected to create all these 8 characters by themselves. This means that the players occupy fundamentally different worlds, even as they tackle individual dungeons together since they don't hail from the same town. Often innovations are for the better, but this one feels like a step backwards. In order to fix this, players should be able to share the same world, belong to the same caravan, and hail from the same town. Hashtag let players that play together stay together. Number 2 One for one, all for one. Adding to the problems with the remastered edition of Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles as a multiplayer experience, there is a big problem concerning progression in the game. Wherein just the host progresses and everyone else is just along for the ride. Imagine playing Portal 2, the quintessential multiplayer experience I might add. And each time you solved a puzzle, the party that wasn't hosting had to do the same puzzle all over again in order to progress through the game. This further adds to the problem of not actually sharing a world with those you play with, and devalues the multiplayer experience even further. For this one, the fix is quite simple. Let everyone that finishes a dungeon progress, not just the host. Also, let everyone get mail since there is no need to make the experience less joyful for the party as a whole. I mean, what's the justification for only letting one member of the party have fun? And how is that a good strategy to keep a group of players engaged in the long run? Am I bitter about not getting mail because I was playing the light version on an iPad, or my brother was hosting on the PlayStation 4? Maybe? Maybe? Where's my mail, Kubo? Where's my mail? Number 1. Local Couch Co-op Seeing as Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is a game that literally centers around everyone sharing the same space on the screen lest they die, it seems an odd and out of place decision to not include local multiplayer. It seems especially odd considering the original game design centered around local couch co-op, and leaving this aspect of the experience out creates a giant, very palpable Marlboro-sized hole. At first, I thought that the local couch co-op would either be unnecessary due to the robust online multiplayer option, or impossible due to different players having different information on their screens. 
As we have seen, however, the game's implementation of multiplayer is severely lacking, and the different information on display is quite trivial. The only logical reason I can see making sense is Square Enix trying to push as many players as possible to different hardware platforms to play the game. This would obviously reflect very well on the company as they could claim to have a large player base on all of these platforms, which in turn strengthens their bargaining position when releasing new games for said platforms, as well as having the added effect of maximizing profits for this release by having the game so visible on multiple platforms. This may seem like a cynical take, but coming from someone who actually works in the game industry, believe me when I say that pissing off a small percentage of your fan base for potential monetary gain is just par for the course for a lot of companies. A lack of local co-op does not seem like a decision a competent game designer would make. It reeks of higher-up meddling, where a game development team has been instructed to make sure to hoard people onto as many platforms as possible. The end result feels unnatural, tone-deaf, and acts ultimately as a nail in the coffin of a game that could have been so much more than the sum of its parts. Thank you for watching 5 Fixes for Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition. Please tell us in the comments below if you think Square Enix should implement some of these changes. Do you have any suggestions? I'm dying to know. Time for some bird sounds. Why did the bird get a ticket? Because it broke the law. Of gravity!